Hi, everyone, and welcome to Trades of the Week with myself and no other than Keith Sullivan. Now, today we have so much to cover, but before we dig our teeth into the stock market that was down 4% yesterday, the crypto market, God knows how much that's down, we'll find out today. But before that, we just need to mention that on Thursday, it's a perfect opportunity for you to attend our free crypto masterclass at 6 30 p.m. UK time. Make sure you don't miss it because you're going to be learning exactly how you get started with cryptos and what are the best opportunities right now. And you will be learning from one of the best in the world, which is Marcus de Maria himself. So do make sure you attend that. Sign up. The link is here somewhere or below, but press the link and sign up now because we only have a limited amount of spaces on there as well. So make sure you claim yours right now. So 6 30 on Thursday, UK time. Now, that being said, let's dive into the market because we have so much to go through today. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Is that what you're saying? That's but if we, say, start, <laughs> <laughs> if we start looking at um, CHPT, this is um, one that we're, we've been in for a long time time and last week if you remember we said should we take profit on this keith and keith said no exactly because we're following the strategies so what we're doing is we keep moving our stop loss down now looking in looking in 3.5 percent in profit but <clears throat> the, the the candles are not always so kind to us because if we have a look at whd it just went down took us out a two percent profit and then reverse higher again and so we could have got another percent, but we don't know, right? It's very difficult <laughs> to know how the market moves. So with that being said, I think it's time to move, Keith. Are we ready? I'm ready. Move. I think so. All right. That was a move. So what WHD was that. So we're out of this now with a 2% profit. MRK, I know you were in this as well, Keith. I hope you did just as well as um, we are seeing here. So we put the stop loss as 2.3% for some reason. So we did move it up a little bit. And yesterday it did just go below. So we got stopped out on this on Friday, actually. So that's another move there. Move. And that being said, if we keep looking at this, med, we're a little bit in profit there. Not worth looking at that much. We had a 1% loss on Mara. I still think this is a good one because it's in the crypto space. So it has gone down a lot, but we are getting out of this at the moment. We're not trading for revenge here. So we're leaving this at the moment. And then we have VRT. There is no trade. It just kept falling lower. So we have not entered this from last week. So um, uh, this is no trade. Let's cancel that. And GMRE, this is global medical rate. This, uh, we thought this looked very good, but the market roamed lower. It just took us in and said, pick a boo, and then dropped down like a rock and got us out at a 1% loss. So no emotions there, Keith, but did you cry when this happened? <laughs> no, no, no emotions involved in trading. So no <laughs> crying, no crying happened. <laughs> okay, well, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. And then we look at NEE, that's Next Era Energy. There's no trade as well. You just kept going lower from, um, from when we placed this as, uh, as well. So, well, actually, it's interesting. We need to look at this because it might be that we did get taken in on this big candle here. But we need to look at that. I'm going to check with the trading team after so we we'll report on this next uh, week. But, um, but, uh, but the other ones for sure. And that being said, with the last one that we went into last week is Boeing Company, right? And we have a stop loss there on 2% now. It did go lower from last week when we talked about this. We're locked in 2% on that as well. So as you can see, even though we had two losses, we only lost 1%. We had two profits of 2% each, and we locked in several more. So this is the thing, right? Even though the market is dropping, and we're going to get a market update in a moment, and even though it's dropping, it doesn't matter for us when we're trading because we're taking advantage of the upward and downward movements. And uh, please comment below. Would you like to learn this? Make sure you comment below. And if you're getting these results as well, do make sure you comment below on that as well. And before we get into the new ones, Keith, there is one thing I want to mention. And that is if you are a client of ours, you might sometimes see, well, I don't get the risk reward ratio. This green, how much you might make versus how much you might lose. That's the risk reward ratio. 
And if you don't get that, it is okay when you get a little bit more experience to calculate with half a percent below and above as well To um, if you get a really good pattern. But it does require a bit of experience and do make sure you try it on a demo account first. So that being said, let's jump into it, Keith. What is happening in the market? Why is it crushing and then coming back and soaring higher? What is happening? So in regards to the market, the market itself has been very, very volatile. There's a bit more fear coming into the market because of an announcement that happened last week uh, with the Federal Reserve now doing meetings today and tomorrow discussing how is the best way for them now to increase interest rates. Now, obviously, with an increase in interest rate shows you that the economy now is going to start to shrink, okay, because more people are going to be saving money than spending money. So this is one of the biggest driving forces, uh, which has caused this, this recent bearish move. Now, would I call it a bearish market? No, I think it's just a short-term retracement because the market itself still was massively overvalued. So that's the first thing is what is the uh, Federal Reserve going to do with interest rates? And we will know by Wednesday or latest next week of what is the proposal for the increase in interest rates. Now, one of the main reasons, once again, and we talk about this week in, week out, is all down to the inflation side in America. So they're trying to bring inflation down. And this is just a natural step in regards to an economic process. Okay, when you see inflation increase, interest increases, causes people to save money, and that regulates the, uh, the economy in America, brings inflation down, and we go back into a normal cycle. Now, as you can see on the chart, uh, Dennis has the S&P 500, and we saw yesterday a massive bearish move. And that was because of the, obviously, the news that happened on Friday about the meeting this week. You had a lot of outside, or, uh, outside trading. OK, on Saturday and Sunday. And then when Monday hit, you saw a lot of the sell orders begin to be fulfilled. OK, and this is what's caused this kind of retracement in the market, little drop in the market. And with that, we've now seen that buyers feel this market was too cheap and they've started to buy in quite heavily. And this is where we've seen a massive reversal in the market. So if you have a look at yesterday's candle, Dennis, I believe that candle from yesterday dropped around 4%. OK, and yeah. then if you have a look, so what we're seeing on the candle is the market opened, the market started trading lower, 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 lower. It went down by 4%. And then we saw buyers come into Almost the market, push this market even. up. And then we actually saw the market close on a positive rather than a negative, meaning it closed with an increase in value. And this is a great signal for a um, for buying. OK, it's known as a hammer. And it's a uh, reversal candle. So showing that people are willing to buy in this market. Now, I still feel we could trade below the, uh, the support level on the S&P 500 because we're still needing to entice people into the market. Remember, for people to buy into the market, they've got to be enticed. And the way that you do that is by buying in at cheaper prices. Mm -hmm. So I expect a bit more of a pullback, okay, and then the market to rally and recover a bit more. Once again, it's great opportunities for us because we've got more VCAs, more shorting positions. And as you saw from Trades of the Week uh, results that Dennis just went through, it's a testament to um, being hedged in the market because we lost a couple on our long positions because the overall market was bearish, but we made a lot of profits on our shorting positions. So just make sure if the market does become bearish, you want to be hedged in long and short positions, but also have VCAs running and be liquid enough. So you've got the money to buy as that market drops. Um, and the last thing that I'm going to add on the market update is, where is the money going? So we're seeing that there was selling off out of the market. So where was that money going? Is it staying in dollar or is it going into commodities? And right now, if we look at the dollar index, we can see that has been increasing. So at this moment in time, more money is being held as dollars rather than equity or commodities. And this is where we're now going to see what is the next stage for um, institutional investors. Are they going to pump the money into commodities, so push your gold, your silver up? Or are they going to slowly inject that back into the equities? Once again, unfortunately, the crystal ball from Amazon hasn't come. So we don't know what is actually going to happen. But yeah. we just need to have our finger on the pulse. We need to be on the right side of the fence. And if we start to see the market fall, we know what we need to do. Mm -hmm. And the best way to do that is obviously follow trades of the week right there, Dennis. 
Yeah, absolutely. Make sure you follow us to get the newest insights. And you can see, right, the performance is really good from the buffaloes we're in because we are hedged. And we're going to add two more to the equation here. But before that, um, if you look at gold, for example, it's in this massive triangle. And from a, a technical perspective, if it breaks this triangle, I think we can see some really nice and interesting moves in gold and silver. So it looks like gold and silver might be benefiting and um, actually looking quite nice compared to the stock market at the moment. So yeah, a lot of eyes this week on the Fed, but what actions are we taking? Well, we've been telling you this as well, that the companies we're getting into with VCA, which I'm getting to in a moment, are solid companies. So we do need to make sure we invest into companies that cannot go to zero. I'm gonna show you how to measure that as well. But when we're trading, we're adding, for example, Abbott Laboratories, and we got this big reversal yesterday. And we had this huge, we have this upward trend, it's still intact. We have a good risk reward ratio that you can look at as well. I would like to get a smaller candle though, and maybe a nice little green candle today. Um, that it's hopefully a bit lower than this, but we'll see if we get that. And just be aware, earnings, that's the 26th of January in uh, y y tomorrow, so it might be worth, thing, worth waiting until that's actually happened because it might add uh, a little bit of uncertainty or uh, erratic move in the market, so we want to avoid that. So just make sure you look at that. The last one we're adding, which is a short opportunity, is Nuva. Nuva Sieve. This is actually, I think they were working with, um, um, well, it's in the healthcare sector. It doesn't matter that much since we are trading this in the shorter term. And the trend is bearish. It's going down. And the only thing I would look out for is this. We have a shorter term upward trend. Here. So I would like to see that candle with a specific color, Keith. Which color is that? It's got to be a red candle. Got to be a red candle. Yeah, bingo. But yeah, absolutely. A red candle here would make uh, make me very happy today because then we could get into this. And naturally, if you place the order below, you will get a red candle that goes down. So let's see how the market acts on the Fed announcements today. So it might actually might be worth waiting for that because that's going to make um, make a move in either direction, Big uh, a big move in either direction, I think. And that's why we're adding a short and a long because uh, we might lose 1% on one, but maybe the other goes down 3 4%. So we make some good profits on that. So that being said, let's jump over to cryptos as well. Now, the crypto market, of course, is something everyone is speaking about, and it really has been falling since last week. We thought that the, or I thought that the 40,000 mark was going to hold. It has not held yet. Uh, but I'm going to give you some perspective now as well. But one thing I want to show you is the Bitcoin futures, because the Bitcoin futures is, um, this is, the difference there is that the crypto market never sleeps, but the futures, they're just open during trading hours. So as you can see, if the market trades during the weekend and then opens on Monday and it opens a lot higher, you get this little gap in the market, which we got here. And these gaps actually tends to get filled. And we actually saw that uh, yesterday, it just went down, filled the gap and then boom higher. So if we don't if we don't manage to reverse higher from here, and then we're definitely gonna revisit the lower level. So hopefully we can uh, get a bounce in the market and maybe even stay a bit stronger. Uh, otherwise, which I think Keith, you're you're um, more into this uh, that we go down in this section, so the institutions have time to accumulate, and then maybe higher. And of course, if we do fail that, then we do think if we break this floor around 30,000, <clears> everyone's watching, then we might head down to 20,000 as well. Uh, but that being said, there's so much positive news going out in the market. And I don't see this going into a bear market yet. So I actually think that by the end of the year, we will close a lot higher than the current prices. I don't know where, but um, definitely a lot higher if it continues as uh, it is at the moment. So we'll see. But uh, currently, we're watching this level here as um, one level of support between the 30 and uh, 32. And then we'll see where it goes. But one thing I want to show you here before Keith adds his point of view on this as well, is if we look here on the monthly chart on Bitcoin, 
And then we change to the log logarithmic scale. Yes, so we can really get some perspective. We can see this dates back all the way to 2012. And what you can see, the market actually looks very bullish when looking at this. So everything else here is just, they say it's noise, right? We see higher highs, higher lows being created. And uh, currently we're trading all the way up here. So in the longer term, even though, yes, we have a 50% correction now, which is natural, then in the longer term, the probabilities, of course, are even though we might go a little bit lower, that we might go even higher, right? But yes, we'll get these big corrections along the way. Michael Saylor from MicroStrategy has said, you know, I'm going to keep buying. Bitcoin is a good investment longer term. And uh, not only that, we also have some really good news here that, for example, that um, I think Block Tower Capital, one of the hedge funds, are saying that it is a new asset still, and it's fairly new, right? It's very volatile, as we can see, and an established asset doesn't really <laughs> move this much. But that being said, in the beginning, Amazon, among other companies, fell down over 90%. And of course, it would have been a great idea to buy Amazon back then. So don't be scared of the volatility. Make sure you do follow a strategy as, uh, as well. Um, so that being said, both Solana and Near, but I'm going to go to Solana now because Solana is, um, is actually has gone down quite a bit, I must say. And by the way, when we looked at the logarithmic scale here, we actually looked at Bitcoin on a monthly chart. So all the candles were a monthly, monthly represented one month. So let's go back to the daily. All right. So that being said here, if we have a look at um, Solana as well. And by the way, Keith, anything you want to add there on Bitcoin? Anything you're looking for and do you think we, uh, might be valuable for to watch? Yeah. So in regards to obviously cryptocurrency, the one thing that I'm always looking at is how are people going to shake out the weak hands? OK, so how do you get out the weaker investors and keep the solid investors in the market? Because it's the solid investors which drive the market overall. So the way that you do that is drive price down until people are selling out or being stopped out. And then it's creating a lot more liquidity for the bigger whales now to buy. So for me, around the, uh, what was that? The 30,000 mark is a good liquidity point that I'm seeing because each time that it has been to this level, it's created two brand new all-time highs. So I am probably looking at some sort of liquidation in that area. Now, mm -hmm. if it breaks and trades below that area, we could be seeing a retest of the 2018 high because that was the last stronger level of resistance. OK, so I'm still very bullish on crypto. Obviously, short term, yes, we're having a retracement, but it's a great time to accumulate. And I think um, one of the <laughs> favorite quotes from Warren Buffett is when the tide goes out, we see who's been swimming naked. OK, huh. and I love that quote just because it's so true. When there is fear in the market, we see who are the proper investors and hopefully everyone on the uh, trades of the week are uh, understanding that you need to be buying as this market falls. It's not about being fearful with the herd. We need to not follow the herd, okay, and start accumulating at cheaper prices. And that's what I'm doing, Dennis is doing, all that the team are doing, okay? Um, but overall, really positive news coming out. Uh, you're seeing good news about Phantom. You're seeing a lot about NFTs, a lot about Solana, Metaverse game. So there's a lot of positive news which could contribute to a bigger push up in the market uh maybe not now but over the next few months for me yeah for sure and we've been adding to our biggest positions here and what keith is saying there is so important and the only one to make sure you swim all the way is to really have a strategy that you follow so comment below are you following a strategy as well are you committed to making this a success or are you giving up halfway because if you bought Bitcoin at 55,000, I mean, surely you'd buy now at 36,000. But the only way to do that is if you have a solid strategy. So some of the ones we've been adding to our positions and or adding more of is uh, definitely Solana. Let's see if we have that down here as well. Um, yeah, I think so. Because we did add to that. But Solana, for sure, we've added to our position there. A massive down of 65%, which is in incredible so definitely adding to solana and um what else here so cello also down 60 percent now they had some massive partnerships a while back so we're adding to that as well 
And uh, some other ones we're adding too is chilies. This um, is your favorite, Keith. It's down 80% at the moment, <laughs> but it fell down right um, a lot with the market as well. And uh, there's no reason why all of these smaller projects might have fallen down, except that everything moves with Bitcoin. Basically, when you have a sell off, you have a massive sell off in the whole market. And um, Chili's, as you know, they are um, they are they have these fan tokens, the Juventus, Milan, and all these. They, they it's a platform for the fan tokens, which we think can be really big. And Axie Infinity, one of the, actually I like Axie Infinity because it's one of the few crypto games and projects is actually making a profit. They made over hundred million, I think, last quarter as well, and that is awesome. So we are of course looking for the new Axie, but. We think this is a great one to add to the portfolio if you don't have it. Otherwise, we're adding to our position there. Same with Kusama, good blockchain down 64%. We're adding all the way down here. We're following it down. So it's important that you do have money on the sidelines. You are able to do this. Same with Polkadot, great ecosystem. We've been adding to our Polkadot position as well. The same with the uh, Metaverse Sandbox, down 64%. So the market will always give you great opportunities to enter. Same with Gala, down 75%. We've been adding to that as well. Same with the Helium, down 60% at the moment. So good to add that as well. Last but by no means least, Crypto.com. We've been adding to this as well. Down a massive 65% from the high. And it's a great pro, um, blockchain where they are doing, I've never seen the like of it, but they're doing the advertisement. And they even do put it on the, um, the big stadium, right? What was the name of the stadium, Keith? Um, I believe it was the Staples Center in America. Staples Center, that is correct. So very good. So, in um, and and if you look at this as well, we want, we want to have a look at the fair and greed index here, and you can see here that we are around uh, twelve, right? Extreme fair around twelve, and you can see here on the chart that represents from two thousand eighteen all the way to twenty twenty two. Usually, and even during COVID, we were down around 11, 10, 13 on the fair and greed index. And currently, around 13 represents extreme fear in the market. People are selling. People are panicking a bit. Uh, but we're not. We're sticking to the strategy, even though you can always wish you sold more higher. But how would you know? How would you know that you would have sold higher or should sell higher? You only know that afterwards. And uh, we think the upside of cryptos is still so big. So we want to make sure we're in the game. So that's it for cryptos, everyone. And just one thing to mention as well, and I think this is very important. Um, Kardashian, right? Kim Kardashian got sued for, for being kind of, uh, well, acknowledging a crypto together with other famous uh, people, acknowledging a crypto that was proved to be a scam. So make sure you do proper research. And that's what we're here for as well. So comment below the, the main scams that you've been seeing that you would like you know people to avoid. And of course, comment below if you have a project you don't know, you're not certain about, comment below and join our community as well. But we are here to support you all the way there. So just be aware that uh, even though celebrities endorse different projects, it doesn't mean that it's legit, that it's amazing. Uh, just be careful and do your research and just invest both money you can uh, afford, but also uh, if it's a higher risk, invest less. So that's very, very important as well. So last area I want to, want to look into that has really gone well, well, gone well, everything is relative, but <laughs> that's uh, really fallen and that we've been adding into is, uh, is the stock market, right? So PayPal currently down a massive 50%. And I mean, even during COVID, I don't think it was down 33%. So even during COVID, PayPal wasn't down that much. So I think it's a great opportunity if you're not in to get in. We see some good buy volume coming in now. Let's see if that can be sustained. But they're looking very good. And also, uh, if the, now the commodities really picks up, I just want to mention this. This is past Pan American Silver Corp, down a massive 36%. And I think this could be a good one if you're not in any commodities at the moment. Otherwise, we're adding to our position on here, down 50%. We are taking profits, actually, on Caterpillar that we were up 20% on, but we got over oh, 15%. We got stopped out at 10% yesterday. So it's worth a move as well, Keith. Moon. and then activision activision blizzard that got bought was it by microsoft correct and it jumped up we have a stop loss at 20 percent at the moment in case it does go higher on uh, disney we are down quite a bit there as well enter 26 and then minus 36 percent as well 
And the square, I've, I've averaged into this one as well, and we have, but down around 60%, which is quite a bit of a fall for square, I must say. Uh, and we'd like to measure against uh, falls in the past. And during COVID, it fell 60% as well. So let's see if, uh, if this is a company for the future as well. I do believe so in cryptos. And uh, then we have Pacey. We entered this last week. It's around the solid support level. I think this could be a really good opportunity. It's at the support at the moment. So if you missed this last week, here it is. And the one we're adding this week is Microsoft. It's down just 15%, but Microsoft does not tend to fall that much. So we're adding Microsoft to their portfolio as well here because we all know Microsoft is one of the biggest ones in the world, has really good income, good earnings per share, and good outlook for the coming years, low debt, and can handle any crisis basically as well. So a no-brainer when that goes down 15%. So uh, what are you, are you scared before we wrap it up, Keith? Are you scared about this recent fall in the markets? No, definitely not. Remember, no emotions. It's all about just looking at what companies are solid enough for you to invest and meaning they cannot go to zero. So obviously you've got your Facebooks, you've got your Amazons, you've got your Disney's, your Microsoft's. So Microsoft, I love this company because fundamentally it looks really strong and its recent acquisition of Activision is really helping them to generate into the, uh, the gaming, the metaverse or crypto. So I see a good, good future for Microsoft, but remember, it's time to accumulate. Like we are with cryptocurrency, we have to do the same with stocks. Yes, I know stocks is a bit more slower, okay, but it's a bit more consistent, okay? It's less volatile. So it's just finding them stocks that are not going to go to zero and just really investing our money as that market drops. Mm, for sure. And speaking about investing your money, let's get into the results. So with the Buffalo, we closed 2.3% uh, because we had two losses of 2%, two winners, one on two, one on 2.3. So result being 2.3% up, which is awesome. VCA, we took 10% of Caterpillar. The rest, we just investing. So we're in a losing position currently on cryptos and on many VCAs as well. But we only, we're just going to add to it and then we're going to take profit when it goes higher. So that was it for Trades of the Week this week. And don't forget, right, that we do have the Crypto Masterclass on Thursday, this Thursday at 6.30 uh, p.m. UK time. So do make sure you sign up for that. Remember, it's going to be a free webinar for your free masterclass with one of the world's best trainer, which is Marcus and Maria. And I mean, oh boy, we have learned a lot in regards of cryptos from him as well. So I hope you take the opportunity to really do that. And especially if you're new to really learn the foundation before you go into this wild west of the cryptocurrencies. So that being said, we really do hope you enjoyed Trades of the Week this week, and we cannot wait to see you on Trades of the Week next week.